How long is how long is that now? Since we've been here. Um, yeah, it dates back to guys Ryan Rankin, Tim Kimball. Okay. It dates back. We some savages. So everyone else stole it. Yeah, they kind of just ran off with it a little bit. Okay. But we don't mind. We lease it out. <laughs> I thought that was a recruiting thing. Like nah. It's, it, had, it had to stem from somewhere, no? Yeah. It had to stem from so the who, inside room. So who, like, how did it start? I remember? just feel like it was a thing that we played with um, because the coaches that we don't have, Coach Shu, Coach Smart, everybody, they, they, you, you wouldn't be here if you wasn't physical. You wouldn't be here if, if you wasn't blessed physically. So um, we just try to kick that up a notch. So, so we're savages rather than just being physical. If you were going to be an animal of some sort, what kind of animal would you be? What kind of animal would I be? Yeah, would Let's see. <laughs> we would be some Tasmanian devils. <laughs> <laughs> Can't control them. <laughs> we were talking to Kirby back in there, and he was saying that, you know, you've been a vocal leader for about two years now. You know, coming back for your senior year after missing some time last year, do you feel like you're taking more of that responsibility as a leader and for the linebacking court? Um, I don't feel like the time away made any difference or made a, a push for anything, but I just feel like it, it's the time for it now. It's my senior year. Um, guys are looking up to, to us for guidance, us as in the seniors, looking up for us to, to, as, to, for guidance and, and things of that such. So I'm just accepting that role. You got back in the starting lineup uh, against South Carolina. Was there? Uh, was that a good feeling? I mean, just knowing you're trying out there first. I mean, it doesn't matter who's going out there first. Um, we all work the same. Um, it's a rotation between uh, the, the the backers, us four, and it's just who, who whoever's hot. That's who's in, and that's that's the that's the case. We all play our role. Um, can you kind of give me a description of coach of Coach Smart's mentality out of practice? I saw him out there today. And he's just mm -hmm. like you know, like barking at people mm -hmm. or being all fired up. Can you kind of describe his mentality? Um, I just feel like it's a mentality that good isn't good enough. Um, we're striving for greatness. I know great is hard to come by, but pushing forward, you'll be better than good. Um, he doesn't allow us to get comfortable. Um, that's the drop off between a lot of teams and guys who do well and guys who don't. And then from the time he came in here, I mean, how difficult was it to buy in? And now that y'all have, like, are y'all starting to see those results? I guess not only from a win and loss standpoint, right. but from just the culture and how. I say it was definitely a process. It was definitely a process um, that we did have to buy into. And once guys found that the process worked, it was a no-brainer for them. Everybody wanted to hop on board. You guys are in that little gauntlet here where you, uh, you South Carolina threw the ball and spread it a lot. Um, to understand Middle Tennessee State throws and spreads a lot, and certainly Missouri will. Is, it, is, that, uh, is this good that you get in three teams like this row, or are they very different? Uh, and the way they go about their business as three teams. Um, those guys do throw the ball a lot, but it's kind of different, the schemes that they run. Um, but just as far as these type of offense, we have to be great zoners. Um, so that's been an emphasis in practice on um, just being great zoners, um, breaking on the ball and things of those such for teams that does air raid the ball. When it comes to y'all's ability to rush the passer, how would you evaluate you guys through, through two games? I know Kirby said that he wanted to see you guys constantly improve in that area. Right. Um, Going back and look at tape, we actually had more pressure than I thought um, just from being in the game. So that's just going to be a strive, considering we do play these teams that pass the ball. Um, pass rush is definitely going to be an emphasis, so that's kind of been a focus. We were talking to Kirby about it, and he said that the, the way you guys play defense, the whole run first mentality that you guys don't just pin your ear back, ears back and go to the D line and have their own responsibilities right. and run stopping, that that may hinder you guys a little bit sometimes when it comes to rushing the passer. Do you kind of see how that m might be the case? I can see that, but at the end of the day, it's all about reading and reacting, reading and reacting, reading whether it's a run, reading whether it's a pass, reading with just reading and reacting. Do you ever lobby for some snaps and get out there on the edge and do that? Say that again. Do you ever lobby to, to get some edge snaps and get a chance to get after the quarterback? I know that's something you've done uh, in here in the past. And uh, I, I kind of try to stay in coach here, stay in his hip pocket and coach for me for a rush. <laughs> like that, but I just kind of get in where I fit in. Like I say, um, guys on this team play their role. And everyone has a role. Um, uh, another question on Coach Barn. I mean, uh, I know you've been asked about uh, <coughs> about this situation a lot. But after um, uh, everything that you had kind of gone through the past couple of years, I mean, what does it say about Kirby that he was willing to give you that opportunity again? Um, it's just a blessing. It's a blessing to play for a man that believes in what he believes. Um, <coughs> And I'm 
just glad to be have moved forward from it. Going back to that rotation at linebacker you talked about, how does that rotation help you guys stay fresh and kind of in the game and being able to go out when, when needed? It definitely keeps fresh legs. Um, that's the name of the game now. Um, depth, how much depth do you have? So that rotation, getting guys on, getting guys off, and being able to keep those fresh legs, that's big when it comes down to fourth quarter and even time after that with those tough games. Does How'd that, you, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Does, does, it, does it sometimes, um, do you kind of struggle like kind of go, coming on and off, or do you kind of not have a problem going to be able to go um, in and go out? Not really. We don't really struggle. Um, each guy has played with each each other, so it's no one guy plays with this guy and this guy plays with that guy. Everyone rotates with each other, so everybody feels comfortable enough to play next to anybody. There's a kind of commonality between the like, past three years. It was kind of three-headed monster, you and Roquan and Reggie. Now it's four-man rotation. How would you kind of describe it? Um, like I said, depth, man. Guys have been working their tails off. Guys have been working. Tay Crowder, guys have been working. Money Rice, guys have been working. Jawan Taylor, guys have been working. Working to all have the opportunity to be able to play. And I feel like each guy has deserved that opportunity, and that's how we approach it. What's the biggest way you think you guys will comp complement each other when you're on the field? You always do a little bit, something a little bit different. Yeah? So what's right. the biggest way you think you Exactly. Like, um, everybody has their strengths. Everybody has their weaknesses. So we just try to play off each other, complement each other. As well as seen, we can. Uh, Ten, what have you seen out of Tendall and play? Um, those guys Surprise. are coming along. We, we, we pushing them a little bit. Uh, we want them to play. We're, we're giving them roles. We're, we ask them for a lot on special teams. Um, we ask them to contribute a lot to our defense. We give them reps on the defense. We want, we want those guys to play. We want those guys to play, learn as fast as they can, and, and kind of keep, we want this to be LBU. How hard is that transition to from high school to play inside linebacker in the SEC? It's tough, man. It's been a while since I, I, I went through that transition. It's four years now. Yeah. But it, it's tough, man. The speed is different. The intensity is different. It's just a couple things those guys got to get used to. Talking about that transition, there's a lot of talk about the composure and the physicality, uh, the culture of that on defense. How do you feel Tyson Campbell has bought into that culture? Um, I feel like he's bought in really well. Obviously, that's a guy we're, we're depending on right now. And I feel like that's something the, the guys that's on the field with him have helped him gain. Um, because he's not just out there by himself. Everybody's talking to him. Everybody's, everybody's communicating with him and just making him as comfortable as possible. When it comes to the linebacker rotation, there's the physical element with the fresh legs and things like that. But what's it like mentally? Because you know, it seems like you know, you're know you in the game, you're building up a ladder, then you come out, and maybe you're chomping at the bit a little bit to get back in and, and add that with the fresh legs. Um, to be honest, man, when those players get to going and you get to going, it's not too bad when you get a blow. So <laughs> that, that, that hasn't been a problem for me yet or any of the guys yet that I know of. So I guess we'll encounter that when we get to it. You got to go up against a guy like Christian Payne, a fullback, last couple of years in practice. You're rolling your eyes. Uh, when you see Charlie Warner and Nodder, do they bring some of the same stuff from the H-back tight end position? Oh, definitely. Those guys are, are physical as all get up, and they're actually bigger than Payne was. Pain was just different mentally. <laughs> Pain just had a different head on his shoulders. Oh, you, you don't find too many things like that. But those guys are physical, man, and they're big. They can cover you up. All right, all right entertain us here. What, what do you mean different head on his shoulders? Uh, I've never in my life met someone that will come at you the same exact way. Not for a practice, not for a couple practices, but for three years. Like literally <laughs> three years every day he came the exact same way. I, I've never seen anything like it. You talked about the uh, personnel and how it changed year to year at the linebacker position. You've been here a long time. When you go through and work with guys like the Reggie Carters and uh, Roquan Smiths, and now you got this year, what have you taken from that and learned from that, and how have you used that to kind of improve to get to where you are today? Um, I just feel like everybody's different, if I'm understanding your question correctly. Um, everybody's going to have their own their own, I say, savvy about them. Everybody has their own strengths. Everyone has what they can do better. Um, and you kind of just make your defense around it. You keep your same principles, physicality, toughness, mental toughness. You keep those same pillars and kind of just branch the defense out to, to accommodate the players that you have. Is it like taking bits and pieces of everyone else's game and kind of Definitely, and just putting, your... putting it together. Everyone complements each other. Okay. Two more did, questions. Did, uh, you, did, did you get in a... DeAndre Baker's ear during January when he had to make his NFL decision, like come okay. on. Did you get in uh, Bake's ear, DeAndre Baker? 
in January when he had to make a decision about the NFL. I don't know how tell you guys are. Did you talk to him about coming back and, and what does he bring to this defense? Um, that's just a guy, man, that you can just put on that island and, and you can just depend on him. You just know that we're good over here. Let's let's put some help elsewhere. Um, so I definitely begged him to stay. Um, don't know if my opinion matter <laughs> at all, just me personally, but um, yeah, man, that, that's a guy I feel like we need him. Um, I feel like any defense would need him, honestly. And he's just that type of special player. You had a year with this guy. Um, you know, John Thies is out there helping the offensive mm -hmm. lineman and, and, you know, just a guy that, you know, Kirby was saying he's appreciative. He doesn't have to be out there, but he is. Well, you know, did, did you get to know him at all whenever you were around? And, and kind of what, you know, what's it like seeing him out here as a coach after spending a couple years in the league? So the first time I seen him was probably like two weeks ago. And I was like, Thies, what's up, man? What you doing? Like, what you doing here? He was like, I'm just helping out, this and that, this and that. And it was just so amazing to me uh, just coming, a guy that I haven't seen since freshman year. Um, I played with him when I was a freshman. Um, great guy. Um, just, he always did the little things right. He always paid attention to the details and did the little things right. And he critiqued himself all the time. And that was just something that I, I took from him. And I'm just glad that he's with us. Um, I'm sure that the offensive line is pulling a lot from him. Thanks for addressing